open YouTube. Opening YouTube. Open Netflix. Opening Netflix. Before you start watching this video, make sure to watch this video first and also the link is in the description below. If you are watching this video for the very first time, I highly recommend to watch from the beginning all the way to the end. But if you are coming back to watch this video again, in the description I have a table of contents with the corresponding timestamps. So you can click and go directly to the points of interest of this video. But as I said, if you're here for the first time, buckle up, sit back and watch the entire video. Because I think it's interesting. Here is this multimedia video box. It's very simple, comes in this nice packaging. Let's open it. It comes with this user manual, which doesn't have a lot of stuff. So make sure to watch this video. This multimedia box is kind of small, about the size of a cigarette pack. The package comes with a pair of USB cables. One of the cable is an adapter from USB Type-C to a USB Type-A. And the second cable is a USB adapter from Type-C to Type-C. There is a USB Type-A input to connect additional drives. The box itself has two inputs on both ends. And on the opposite side, there is a USB Type-C output connecting to a car. Make sure to insert this cable into the correct USB slot. Not all USB inputs have a smartphone integration. For example, in this car, we have to connect this cable to the left USB input labeled with a small image of a smartphone. Most cars have type A USBs, but if you have the latest model like this Mercedes, you already have USB type C. Make sure the green light is flashing. If it doesn't flash, it means the box did not connect successfully. Now let's measure the time how long it takes to connect to my car. I have to deduct about one second for the time it took me to hit the start button. And BAM! So it takes about 15 seconds for this multimedia box to connect to the car. When you connect for the first time, there is a data protection notice. Just hit accept and start. Then you'll see a confusing message, starting Apple CarPlay. Don't get confused. As I explained before, this multimedia box has nothing to do with Apple CarPlay. This box uses Apple CarPlay technology to establish a connection with your car. But since your car doesn't know anything about this multimedia box, it assumes that you connected your iPhone. That's why your car refers to this box as Apple CarPlay. For your driving safety, please do not watch videos while driving. Just click OK. If you have a touchscreen display in your car, you can control this multimedia box right on your screen. It also works with all your original vehicle controls, including buttons on the steering wheel. You see, you can go left and right, up and down, which is especially great for cars without a touchscreen. You can also select and hit enter. 
For example, this is a YouTube app, as you can see on the screen. Once you open the app, this touch button works like a mouse on the screen to highlight and press to enter. You can also use your car's original back button no, Ms. Cabbage. Ms. Cabbage. If you have a touch screen, that would be the easiest way to control it But if not, you can use your steering wheel's buttons Let's highlight Netflix and hit OK to select And go ahead and scroll it using the touch screen this car has a central touchpad and it works as well. As you can see, you can swipe your finger like a mouse, which becomes a round pointer on the screen. Highlight anything and click to select. Very easy peasy. Hit the back button to exit. I can use the original vehicle's voice control button by pushing this voice button once and it still works even while the multimedia box is connected. Call Kate. I found several contacts. Who do you mean? Let's cancel it for right now. What can I do for you? Touch on Apple CarPlay to go back to your multimedia control. Or you can hit the media button as well. As you can see, this multimedia box completely integrates with your car. If you hit your car's voice control button and hold it for about 4-5 seconds, it will open Google Assistant instead of the original voice control. But as of right now, you can see that Google Assistant isn't even available on this device. I'm gonna show you how to install it later in this video, so keep watching. First we'll go to settings. Here you can change many different things. You can change the language, restore it to factory settings, you can view help, even though there is not much help there. You'll be much better off just watching this video. You can view accessibility and select the time zone. So let's choose Los Angeles. You can change 24 hours to 12 hours, but most importantly, you have to go to WLAN because we need to connect this box to the internet. Here you can see this box already found this Mercedes internet hotspot MBUX that came with this car. But for this video, I'm gonna show you how to provide internet from your cell phone. Depending on your smartphone, you have to turn on the mobile hotspot, which you can quickly turn on and off when needed. But before you do, you have to set it up. Go to your cell phone settings. Turn the hotspot on. And then touch and hold to see the details. I like to change the username so that I can recognize the device later. And I'm gonna put something straightforward like uh, Samsung, so I know it's my phone. Let's hit save. And now I'm gonna create a password. Now this is important. It has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Especially if you have non-touch screen because it's already set up in the multimedia box. Now let's connect our media box to a Samsung internet hotspot. And bam! Houston Wave Dunker. Contact confirmed. And you can see a little lock on the Samsung Wi Fi because it's password protected. If you hit this home button, it will take you back to the home screen. You're not only limited to your cell phone hotspot, you can use any Wi Fi. For example, places like Starbucks provide free Wi-Fi and some even give a decent internet speed. Go to settings, select WLAN and as you can see this box found Starbucks Wi-Fi. 
Notice that the little lock is unlocked on the right side, which means it's open and there is no password. So you can easily select it and use it in your car. One thing I noticed, the time still hasn't changed and it still shows Tuesday, December 31st. Everything takes time in this multimedia box, so we'll have to check later. After we set up the hotspot inside the cell phone, now we can turn it on and off when you enter or exit your car or any other time when you need it. So now let's go to Google Maps. It's very important to sign in to your Google account because if you don't, there is not much you can do. Go ahead and enter your Google credentials. And here I encounter one problem that many of you will too. Every time I try to enter something, the screen just disappears. And then I realized that when I type letters, there are these three buttons on the left side getting in the way that I keep touching by accident. Most likely, you will encounter the same problem, so make sure to move those buttons out of the keyboard. Now let me enter my Google credential. Account administration requires signing step for extra security. I actually set up on my Google account two-step verification and I highly recommend doing the same for you. If you or someone else tries to log in into your Google account from any device, you'll get a text on your cell phone where you can approve or disapprove the login attempt. So no one can log in without your permission. So now I confirm it's me. And as soon as you sign in to Google, there are many things right away, right at your fingerprint. So make sure to sign in. Make it your map. So we sign in. Now, if you look at the top bar, you can see my face right there, confirming my account. The Google map is on the screen, but it doesn't look like it knows where I am. And if you double tap, it zooms closer in. I mean, it doesn't look like it picked up a GPS signal. So it works like on the home computer, but it doesn't have a location. If you touch this little circle, it should pinpoint your location. For a better experience, turn on device location. So let's hit OK. If you don't turn the location on, then navigation won't work correctly. Finally, we have the right time and date. 11.37 Wednesday, February 24th. Now let's go back to the settings and select accessibility, obtaining location signal. It looks like this box did not establish a GPS signal yet. You have to make an initial handshake with the satellite by driving outside and under an open sky for a few minutes when you use this box for the very first time. When I'm driving, I notice a vehicle position and there is a car box position. And by the way, it also comes with this GPS antenna you can install in your car for super precise positioning. It's very easy to install, but I don't think you need it because it works pretty well without it. So instead of car box position, I'm going to pick the vehicle position. And you can see the vehicle position successful message immediately. As you can see, this box integrates with my original cameras. When I put the transmission in reverse, all my cameras work properly. So now it looks like my maps are working. Let's pick a direction to this house and hit start. Blah, 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 got it. Head southwest. And the navigation guidance is already working. I noticed that everything you install in this box takes time. Depending on the speed of your hotspot connection, then it has to be updated and then it updates in behind by itself. So the first couple of days, even a couple of weeks, it was very frustrating. Go to nearest McDonald's. McDonald's, all right. But little by little, the performance started to improve. Head southwest on Elevato Avenue toward North Crescent Drive. 
so you have to be patient in the beginning. If you are familiar with Google Maps, a lot of things you can do, like find a gas station, restaurants, grocery stores, coffee shops. I mean, Google knows everything. If you sign in, as I suggested, it already knows about your favorite and safe locations and all the previous destinations, so you can enter into navigation very quickly. Go to the corner of Porta Range and Rinaldi. Okay, Rinaldi Street. Let's go. Google Maps already show me how long my drive will be, how to get there, etc. If I press and hold my car's original voice control button for about 5 seconds, it will activate the Google Assistant. Open Maps. Opening Maps. It's not the latest version, but at least it's a start. And you can ask Google any questions you like. When is the next Kings hockey game? The Kings will play the Blues today at 6.30 p.m. Who invented the car? The car is attributed to nine inventors. Here are the first three. Carl Benz, Andre Citroen, and Etienne Lenoir. I don't know if you noticed, no app found to open the URL. It's because right now this multimedia box doesn't have any internet browsers installed, so you can't go online. You see unlock more assistant features on the bottom. You'll be getting these messages all the time to update something. So now we have a Google Assistant. Hit continue and make sure to use the screen context because it will help you a lot while you're driving. Now we're going to open a Google Play Store. Let's hit accept the privacy. And now you have full access to Google App Store. How great is that? You can download any app now. For example, I can download this game, Bubble Shooter. It's a big file, so it will take some time to download. As you can see, this multimedia box works with your original phone from your car. Let's hang up. If someone calls you, this box immediately switches to the phone. So it's fully integrated with your vehicle. So it took a while to download because I don't really have a good internet hotspot on my phone. But finally it's here. So when I'm bored sitting and waiting for someone to come from somewhere, I can just play the game right here. Very cool. So now let's go to Google Play Store and let's get something more serious. Let's download a web browser. I use Chrome, but obviously you can download any other you like. I use Chrome because it keeps all my bookmarks, passwords and browsing history. So it has a lot of my information that I don't have to provide. Also it's very secure because I have a two-step verification. When it asks you, are you sure you want to turn on sync, make sure it's yes. Everything has to be easy and simple in the car. We're going to talk about security steps for this box a little bit later in this video. Meanwhile, I got a fully functional Chrome internet browser. It works like a computer at home. And you can also use your voice. Weather. It's 51 degrees and cloudy in Valley Glen, California, 91401. You can find any information on Google like it's going to rain in a few days, which we need. It's super dry here in Los Angeles. We need some rain.
you can search by image so it feels like your home computer it feels even more like a google chromebook and you can open any website now right inside of your car you got complete control of google settings you got your search history your data search you can hide explicit results if you have kids inside your car You can open the incognito tab. You can use bookmarks. So you have the total computer power right on the screen inside of your car. Crazy. I have all my bookmarks and passwords saved in Chrome. I also have my credit cards and Google Pay saved. You don't have to give so much permission to your Chrome browser unless you want to. But if you do, make sure to set up a two-step security verification and I'm going to talk about security step later in this video as I mentioned for example if I want to go to my bank account all I need to do is touch my username and the Chrome browser automatically picks up all my passwords so I enter the username and password to see my bank account right from the radio screen of my car. Wow, very cool. You can use your Google's voice assistant and ask any questions while driving. What was the first car ever built? According to Daimler, on January 29, 1886, Carl Benz applied for a patent for his vehicle powered by a gas engine. The patent, number 37,435, may be regarded as the birth certificate of the automobile. In July 1886, the newspapers reported on the first public outing of the three-wheeled Benz patent motor car, Model No. And bam, just like that, we can see the first car ever built right here. This is 1886 Daimler Benz. I'd love to buy this one. You can also split screens with multiple tabs. You can move them. You have the full functionality of the regular computer residing inside of this little multimedia box, which is amazing. You can close all tabs. You can even use your voice assistant to browse the internet. Go to mbzmaster.com Opening web page Now I'm using my voice to open my own website You guys are so lucky now You can watch my Mercedes videos while driving your Mercedes cars I mean, what can be better than that? You can still use all your car's original controls Or you can go via the more apps menu and just hit the chrome button you can actually watch the video right inside of the website this is one of my videos first let me show you something and you can make it full screen since i don't have a good reception over here youtube lowered the quality of the video i can change to high resolution but it may add some buffering that's too big also. Okay, let's go back. Let's search for a YouTube app in the Google Play Store. And since YouTube is already installed on this box, instead of install, it shows update or open. I don't want to update right now, but everything needs to be updated on this box. I can also open the YouTube app right now via Google Assistant. Open YouTube. Opening YouTube. You can search YouTube by pushing the microphone button. And as you can see, this is my YouTube channel. Just to show you as an example. You can go to my channel to see all the videos.
Let's pick this one just as an example. One problem I found with the YouTube ads, you see this little button to skip ads is very tiny, so it's not easy to press while driving. So I highly recommend getting a YouTube premium, so you don't have to deal with all these ads. Plus you can get a one month free, but for right now let's just skip it. As you can see, my video starts playing right away. You can also change text. You can move the video timer, you can forward, you can rewind. You have a complete control of a YouTube player. It's weird to see my finger on the screen and also my finger on another screen. You are watching my video inside of my other video. It's not a double vision, guys, don't worry. I can change the resolution manually to improve the quality. For example, I can switch to high definition. But since my hotspot isn't very fast, this video will do a little buffering. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. Now, if you go to more apps, you can open the YouTube app right here. So there are multiple ways to open apps while you drive. You can search YouTube by touching the search button or you can search by voice. Technology podcast. I don't recommend watching videos while driving because it can be a dangerous distraction. If you park your car in standing still, then it's a different story. Plus, you can get a traffic ticket if you have a video playing while your vehicle is in motion. You have to check with your local state and city traffic regulations if you can do it. However, you can find many videos on YouTube that actually you don't really need to watch. Like for example, podcasts, music, or some talk shows. I'm talking about videos where people mostly talk. This way, you don't need to look at your car screen while driving. For example, this guy has some kind of a talk show. So when I'm driving, I can listen, but I don't really need to see his face. You can go even further and change the screen while playing videos. For example, you can switch to navigation screen while YouTube video plays in the background. So you can listen to this YouTube video without actually watching it. But if you have to go back, press the home button and then hit Apple CarPlay. Now let's go to Netflix via the more apps menu here are the three accounts i have with netflix so let's pick uh, this one and here is something really interesting you can use netflix download and go feature compatible with this android box so for example if you don't have a good wi-fi like me instead of streaming you can download movies from Netflix and watch them later without any buffering, even if you don't have an internet connection. So let's check this video for example, and Netflix immediately offers me to download it before watching it. But for right now I'm not gonna download it. Let's just stream it and see how it works. You can fast forward 10 seconds or move forward to any point of the video. You are in complete control of Netflix video player. But now let's go back. So you can see how to use your voice to open Netflix using a Google Assistant. That's the easiest way to open it while driving. Open Netflix. Opening Netflix. Now let's go to PhoneCast. So in order to mirror your phone, you have to enable casting, streaming or projection, depending on what kind of smartphone you got. For example, Samsung has a smart view, but different phones have something similar. When you mirror the phone, you have to turn off the mobile hotspot. So let's turn it off. Mirroring can work faster since we don't use our hotspot anymore. My phone found the Smart TP2 set device, which is the name of our multimedia box. So let's select it. 
and now anything that is displayed on my cell phone will be mirrored to my car screen. Beautiful! Some phones, like this Samsung, have different aspect ratios. If you'd like, you can change it to 16 by 9 to make sure it fits nicely on your car's screen. So now whatever I do on my phone screen will be shown on my car screen. Turn your cell phone to a horizontal position to fill the whole screen. While you mirror your cell phone, you won't be able to control it from a touch screen. Your cell phone becomes a remote control and you can even give it to your passengers so they can handle it. Now you can watch anything that your cell phone is capable of displaying. For example, I can open YouTube and it works without any hotspot. Amazing. Let's start play something, it doesn't matter what, and BAM! We have the phone mirroring in action. Super! It's so much better and safer than when people attach their cell phones to some flimsy phone holders that often get loose flying all over the car. It's so much safer to watch on the original vehicle screen, which is designed and placed in the perfect spot of your dashboard. Now my daughter can watch her cartoons from the rear seat. Finally! If you have an iPhone, let me show you how to use Apple AirPlay in your car. You go to a personal hotspot and turn it on. Remember, you have to change your password to 1234567 You can do it differently, but let's do it this way in this video. So let's enter password to establish the connection with this box. Now we go to a TV screen, then go to your iPhone and find the video you want to cast on your vehicle screen. Let's try any video, it doesn't make any difference. For example, let's do this one. Locate a screen casting button on your video and select it. Then hit AirPlay. and pick our multimedia box. That's it! Your video has been sent from your phone to your car and it's pretty good quality too. Now you can even close your phone since it already sent the video to your car. The video will be playing in your car even without your phone. Still, you can control it from your iPhone if you want. But now you have all the controls in your car as well. Very nice. If I hit the go back button, the box will ask you if you want to exit the TV cast. You can either cancel or confirm. Now let's touch the home button to go to the home screen. and let's try to airplay something different, so you can see how quickly it works. So to summarize, if you go to the phonecast menu, you can either use a TV screen or a phone screen, in which you can switch from Apple Cast to Android Cast, depending on what kind of phone you have. Now let me show you how to set up a Bluetooth connection to your phone. Go to the BT phone menu and please search for this device from your mobile phone. Make sure to switch this device to a discoverable state. So now all you have to do is just go to your phone's Bluetooth settings and search for this multimedia box. Touch and hold to get there. Then find Smart 2 set and select it to pair. Confirm the pass key and make sure to allow all the permissions. And that's it!
Right now this box is importing all my contacts and as you can see I have a lot of them. I have about over 2000 contacts or something. So you have to wait until everything uploads and then it's pretty simple. You can dial the number, wow it's still loading. I have almost 2500 contacts on this phone. So you can just dial a number, like for example let's say 323, it doesn't matter, just dial anything. As soon as you start dialing, this box helps you to autocomplete on the right side based on what you entered. We're sorry, all circuits are busy now. Please try your call again later. Message CA19355. Or you can select the call records to see your call history. You can call back right from there. Let's hang up. Or you can search by contact name, where you have an autocomplete on the right side. As soon as I start typing the letter S, this box begins to filter out everything else. You can still use your car's original phone system if you like by pressing the voice button only once. Call Mama. Should I call Mama or Mayman, Eden? Mama. Please select one of the displayed phone numbers. I am calling Mama on the mobile phone. And look how easy it is to text. Send text to Kate London. Please dictate your text. How are you? How are you? Do you want to send the message or edit it? Send it. I'm sending the message. It depends what kind of car you have. For example, I like the original phone system of this Mercedes much better than the phone system from this box. You can see on my phone that the text was already sent. Confirmed. You can always get out from your system by hitting the home button and then you can use all the original controls, including the phone menu, so it doesn't have to be the box. Thank you for calling. North Hollywood High. Someone will be with you shortly. And when you finish, you can go back to your multimedia box. One problem I found with this box is it wouldn't let me install an Android Auto app. And I tried to install it because I use this app by Google a lot when driving. I downloaded it a few times, but I could not install it no matter how many times I tried. Every time it said something went wrong. So it seems that this Android Auto app is not compatible with this multimedia box. However, I found a workaround to overcome this. You can use Android Auto by itself as a standalone app on your phone. And all I had to do is just use it on my phone and mirror it to my car. Plus, this way, I don't need to establish any hotspots from my phone. You just use your phone as a remote control. And it's completely wireless because normally you'd need to connect your phone via a USB cable in order to use an Android Auto in your car. But now, you don't need to deal with all these wires. After you enter destination into the navigation, which you can also enter by saying, OK, Google, everything gets mirrored to your car. Head west. And you can listen via your car speakers.
We can close our cell phone because now you can see everything on the screen. So let's try how it works. I'm gonna drive and it follows my screen and it turns with me. You can also see the speed limit. A quarter mile. Turn right. You can also use an Android Auto to play some music or a podcast because it's integrated with Google Maps seamlessly. Let's use Pandora Radio to play some music. It doesn't matter, for example, this one. and I can switch back to Google Maps while playing the music. Remember, you can also control the phone by the OK Google command. Now you can see all the details on your screen, like traffic, speed limit, speed and time to destination. One of the reasons I rarely use Android Auto is because I don't like to mess with USB cables all the time. But if it's wireless, I'm all in. But I still want to get the navigation actually installed on this multimedia box. For that reason, I will install a different type of navigation, which also comes from Google. It's called Waze. And as you can see, 100 million downloads, 4.4 stars out of 8 million reviews. So it's very popular. I know a lot of people who love this navigation system. It didn't pick up my location, so I need to select a country. Let's choose the United States. Updating the map. Everything you install needs to be updated. Here you can log in. It's a good idea to log in and set up everything from your home. But since I don't have an account with Waze, I'm gonna accept everything and just go without login. It looks like Waze picked up a location now. Now Waze has to download the voice guidance. Right now it's at 0%. You can change vehicle type and many other settings, but the best thing to do is log into Waze when you're at home in front of a computer where you can adjust all your settings. But here you can see the map is already working. And I can pinpoint myself. You can set your map always to face north or you can set the map facing in the car direction. You can see all the definitions of map icons here. You can take the advantage of using a carpool and there is much more that I don't want to go over right now. Select the search to enter the address. Here you can add your home and work address as well as your favorites and upcoming. You can also connect your calendar and even music sources. Unlike an Android Auto, Waze is totally compatible with this multimedia box. Or you can use a Google Assistant to open the Waze app as I showed before. And it works perfectly. Open Waze. So let me enter a point of interest by voice, by touching this orange mic button. Go to Vineyards at Pointer Range. I'm impressed because it was founded right away, which shows 0 0.9 miles from where I am right now. Let's click on it. Immediately you can see a lot of information before you even go. Waze gives you lots of options. Let's go. All set, let's go. Turn left on Overman Avenue, then turn left on Chatsworth Street. The map shows the speed at which I'm currently driving and also speed allowed. So that's interesting. 
In 300 feet, you'll arrive at the vineyards in Porter Ranch, your destination will be on your right. You've arrived, destination is in your right. And as you can see, we came to the perfect destination. It brought me exactly where I was asking for. The vineyards at Porter Range. Another convenience of using the Waze app is it changes from day to night mode. Open Waze. Opening Waze. So you have no strain on your eyes at night. There are many types of other navigations you can get, but I want to show you one more. It's called Osmant. And this one actually shows that it can work offline, without any data and without the internet. Already it has over 5 million downloads, over 100,000 reviews at 4.6 stars. Not bad. But most importantly, it can work without any internet. Just by using a GPS locator, the same as an original navigation system in most cars, by utilizing the separately downloaded maps. It can work with or without the internet, which is great. This app suggests downloading your local map immediately by determining your location or by selecting another region. It found the Los Angeles map at 179 megabit. Whoa, that's a big download, which is gonna take a while. Let me start and I'm gonna come back after it's finished. So now it's downloaded, let's show the map. This navigation gives so much information that I've never seen anywhere else. Much more than you actually need it. Now I see uh, Buena Park, Fullerton, Anaheim. Okay, so it tells me that I downloaded the wrong map. <laughs> Let me try to pinpoint myself. So now I can see my positioning, hmm, but I don't see any map. Okay, let's start driving and see if it can catch the map. I can see myself moving as this little arrow, but don't see any map. Let's try to zoom out. I can see that we only downloaded the South Los Angeles map. And BAM! Osman suggests downloading the Los Angeles North map. LA is just too big for just one map. You can go to the menu, which looks like a hamburger, and select Downloads here. You can download different countries, even Antarctica. So if you ever go to Antarctica to visit all these penguins, make sure to download this app. Don't leave your home without it. You can download any map in the world. But if you take a look on the right, you will notice that you have only 5 free downloads left. You can only get a total of 7 maps to download for free. So make sure to download maps wisely. By the way, it's good to have this app on your phone in case if you travel to another country. For example, where you don't have any cellular service or any internet. Because this app will work anywhere, regardless of if you have cell service or if you don't. So now we have an entire map covering the whole of Los Angeles County. If you touch this circle, you will pinpoint your exact position. Let's zoom in and zoom out. These apps gives you more granular information when you zoom in closer. This app gives you so much information, even shows the actual shapes of the houses on the street. If you go to Osman settings, you can literally spend a few hours trying to customize it and display the information you like to see. It comes with wealth of data. But right now, I'm gonna test if it can hold my position while I'm moving. When I drive, the circle changes to an arrow. And when I stop, arrow changes back to the circle. It shows me driving very precisely. You can see my speed at 1.8 miles per hour, 900 feet elevation, horizontal precision of 82 feet. You can see my exact coordinates and you can even see the online photos. And that's just the beginning. This app can also display the speed cameras in front, so you don't get tickets. You can select and also download the voice guidance in different languages. 
Obviously, you can set up home and work addresses as well as others. You can choose option to set up what you wish to avoid, follow tracks, use only the fuel efficient way and allow private access. So now I'm gonna test if this Osmond app will work without any data and without the internet as it was promised. I'm going to turn the mobile hotspot off on my phone. So right now I disable the internet out of this multimedia box completely. If you look on the top left of the screen, you'll notice that the internet is completely disconnected from this box. So no data is coming. Let's go to the more apps and select the Osmond app. And now let's see how it will work without the internet. Look at this little arrow. You can see all my movements on the map clearly. Wow, very, very nice. Basically, it works as a regular navigation system, which doesn't require any data. Interestingly, you can change the map entirely based on what you do. If you have internet, if you use it driving a car, if you're bicycling, walking, or use transit transportation, you can use a different map with different info for each from the above. So if you like to hike, for example, especially somewhere you don't know where you are, it makes sense to have it on your cell phone regardless, because now you can have a map in places where there is no service or reception. Right now I'm driving in the area which is very close to the mountains. There is almost no reception over here. Actually, there is none. Look, I have zero bars on my cell phone, no data, no cellular service. Even my original vehicle navigation has a hard time pinpointing my location. But as you can see, this Osman app works like a charm and keeps following my position without any problems. Wow, nice! As I've shown before, you can find a USB Type-A connector on the opposite side of the box. It's an input for an external drive, like a USB stick, for example. I got this good-looking USB stick from Mercedes Financial as a present a few years ago, and I still have it. Anyway, you can write music or video files on that stick and play them via this multimedia box. It tells you what kind of files it supports so that you can burn your playlist in a suitable format. With that, you don't need to use any data or the internet, just plug and play. And the good thing, you can take all your music and videos with you from one car to another or back home. Now let's go to Google Play, let's talk more about entertainment choices and music. Here you can download any apps you like, for example Pandora Radio is free to use, I will install it, but you can install any other similar apps. There are millions of music or podcast apps like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, etc. So once you download and install it, you can then open it. If you have an account with Pandora, you can log in to get all your settings transferred. I actually have an account with them, let's log in. And the beauty of the Google Chrome browser, it auto-completed my saved username and password, so I don't have to remember or enter it every time. And immediately this app offers to perform an update. Everything needs to be updated on this box and it takes time depending on the speed of your connection. Since I logged in, Pandora already knows all my channels and preferences. and you can play, pause and fast forward. You can give thumbs up and thumbs down so Pandora learns and will give you more recommendations based on what you like. Let's close it. Then you can play any music in the background without even going directly into your music app. And let's go to the more apps menu and I'm gonna select the Waze app. Here you can combine the navigation app with the music app to control both on the same screen. Here is how to do it. 
Touch the pink music icon on the right top corner and now you need to attach the music app of your choice to this Waze navigation system. I have only one app now, which is Pandora, but there are millions of other music apps that you can add. I agree and accept the connection to Pandora and now I can play and control my music app right inside my Waze navigation system. Go to 1234 North La Brea Avenue. We have to confirm the correct address and hit go. Right now, I'm using navigation and playing music from Pandora Radio at the same time. So both are integrated into one single app. In one mile, use the right lane to take exit 9C, Highland Avenue, Hollywood Bowl. Beautiful. So how would you use this box if you live in a place with bad reception or if your cell phone service provider has slow data for your hotspot? You can still take advantage of this multimedia box anyway and I'm gonna show you how. First, if you remember you can use a USB stick to play videos and music which doesn't require any data or internet. Second, you can use the smart view to cast, airplay or mirror your phone to your vehicle's screen where you need to turn the hotspot off completely. That includes web browsing, video and also navigation mirroring. So instead of using the Wi-Fi for this box, you just use the data from your phone which can speed up everything. Third, if you get premium YouTube, which I recommend, you won't have to deal with any ads anymore. But most importantly, you can actually download YouTube videos into this box. Then you can play those videos without any internet since you already downloaded them. Save videos for when you really need them. Save videos for when you're low on data or can't get online. 4. Netflix gives you the ability to download movies as well. You should download and go when you have an internet connection. Then you can play those videos without any internet since you already downloaded them. If download is available, it will be suggested on the right side. 5. Some navigation apps like Osment that I shown do not require any data or internet. Initially you need to download maps, but it doesn't require any data anymore once you do. It works like most stack navigation systems using GPS positioning. It even works in places without any cell phone coverage. 6. Most games don't need any internet once you download them. So these are just a few examples of how to use this box when you have a bad reception or no internet whatsoever. A few times I encounter the problem with downloading and sometimes installing an app. If you see something wrong, all you have to do is clear this device's memory. Go to more apps and select the clean up button. Then you see a confirmation message, memory cleanup complete. That will fix a lot of bugs if you encounter any. If you install an app but then decided to get rid of it, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom and select the uninstall button. Then the media box will show only those apps that are possible to uninstall. Select the app and it will be uninstalled instantly. Some cars, especially those without touchscreens, can benefit from a remote assistant. But you can add it from the manufacturer or get any remote control designed for Android TV. You can set a password for this box for security, but I don't recommend it. Because nobody will use this box except you. Plus, you don't want to deal with passwords every time you get in and out of your car. But it creates a security problem. If you lose this box somewhere, since you never set the password, anyone can figure how to open it. So if it happens and you lose it, 
I'll show you how to sign out of these bugs remotely. Go to myaccount.google.com from any computer, then click on security on the left side. And then scroll down to where it says your devices and click on manage devices. Here you can see a list of all the devices where you are currently logged in using the Google credentials. For example, you can see a device named Mali where there is no screen lock. So if I lose this device, someone can turn it on and view my information. But the good news is you can sign out from any device remotely. All you have to do is click three dots on the right of this device and then select sign out. As soon as you hit sign out, all your information will disappear from this box so that nobody can get in. And if it happens, I would also recommend changing your Google account password altogether. So the first thing I was disappointed, this multimedia box runs on Android 7. As you can see, when I tried to connect to this device, Google asked me if I want to connect to Android 7.0, which is really outdated since we're already using Android 11 for a while now. Google released it in September of 2020. But then I realized we don't really need Android 11 for this car, for that to work. Android 7 is totally fine, basically. All you need is just to play YouTube, Netflix, mirror your phone, basic stuff, run apps via Google Play, and use Google Assistant for the voice control. So for the car, Android 7, it's actually totally fine. You don't need anything newer. Another thing you should know, this multimedia box is not made in United States. So people who make it, they don't know about your local traffic regulations or your local laws. Some states prohibit the use of so-called video in motion, which means when you drive, you have video playing on your screen. As you can see, video plays while you drive. If you play the video while you drive inside your car, you may get a ticket. I mean, you have to check with your local city and state regulations and see what they say. This box gives you a warning not to watch video while you drive, but this box cannot stop video from playing while your car is moving. So the video will continue to play if you stop the car or if you drive. Obey your local traffic regulations. So don't watch and drive at the same time. Remember, this box offers you so much more than just videos. It offers you a lot of entertainment besides watching videos. And as you know, most cars are designed to block video. As soon as you put your transmission in drive, the video stops playing. That's as far as I know. But I also know a lot of people actually want this feature to work. It's called Mo Video in Motion. And you guys spend a lot of money trying to find all kinds of gadgets to disable so you can actually play videos while you drive. And I understand why. If you're an experienced driver, you're not gonna watch video while you drive, especially on the high speeds. However, sometimes you want to offer your passengers, or for example, if you have kids in the back, like me, you can play some videos so they're gonna watch. But again, it can be a distraction, so. And also watching videos on your vehicle screens, I think it's much safer than attaching cell phones to a dashboard insecurely. And a lot of videos that YouTube offers are not actually something that you need to watch. A lot of videos are like podcasts, music, and videos where people mostly talk. And personally, that's what I use while driving. I don't need to stare at my screen while driving. I just want to listen to some talk shows, which are on YouTube. I can even change to another screen, navigation for example, and make my video play in the background. 
So this way I have no distractions. I have my navigation on the screen and the video is playing in the background. And this kind of video, it's not something that I need to see, but I'd like to listen to. For example, if I want to listen to this podcast, I don't really need to look at the screen. I can hit the original home button and switch the screen to display the navigation, for example. But my video is still playing in the background, so I can still listen to the audio. And if I want to go back, I just hit Apple CarPlay. And this way, I don't have any visual distractions. One problem I found when YouTube is start playing ads. Then you have to go back to the screen and click this little tiny button where it says skip ads, which is not very easy to do while you're driving. For that reason and many other reasons, I personally recommend to get the YouTube Premium. This way you can watch and listen without any advertisement. Plus, you can also download videos from YouTube and play them later, even without internet connection. Save videos for when you're low on data or can't get online. This is the best fail bucks I've ever spent. Think about this. Usually when I drive, I have to listen to the radio. But most of the time I can't find anything interesting. So when I drive, I go station to station to station, I can't find anything I like. And I end up to listen to something that doesn't really interest me, but since I have no choice, I just listen while I drive. YouTube is different. On the YouTube, you can find anything. I mean, anything. This way I can actually find what I like and I can listen to that. It can be a talk show, it can be a podcast, it can be music, whatever. And besides, this multimedia box also gives you access to Google Play Store. So you can download any apps which doesn't use any videos, like for example, Pandora Radio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and millions more of different apps that don't actually use any kind of video, it just uses audio. And the sky is the limit. Another problem you may find, this multimedia box requires a decent internet speed. And you may have a slow Wi-Fi in your phone. Well, here you have to contact your cell phone service provider and discuss with them what kind of plans do they offer and what kind of speeds they offer. Also, as I've shown in this video, you can use this multimedia box without any internet connection or without any data. You can still use it. There are a lot of apps that support the use where you don't need to have any internet or Wi-Fi. Another issue I found with this box, and I had this box for a couple of months before I made this video, and it requires a long setup. I mean, it comes bare bones, it really doesn't have anything set up and you have to download and depending on your connection it may be slower and it takes time to update. So updates run in behind but if you have slow connection these updates takes time. So first couple of weeks it was like really frustrating to me but once I start downloading right apps and the system start to work properly and then I update it and then the system start to update itself it actually starts working much better and after two months I'm using this on a daily basis. Every day when I drive I actually use this box right now. So until you update all the apps you have to be patient. The company who makes this box is located in Hong Kong but I checked them out. They make their own products and they stand firmly behind it. So they are not one of those middleman resellers. This company has their own research and development department, developing their products themselves. They also offer some help answering questions via their Facebook page. Most importantly, they offer 30 days money back guarantee. So if for some reason this box is not compatible with your car, you can return it and get your money back. However, I noticed they do refund your money, but they don't cover the shipping cost and you have to ship it to Hong Kong. So it's about like 10, 20 bucks, something like that. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I thought you should know. And here's the question, should you buy this multimedia box? 
Well, I can answer that question for you. So what I did in this video, I showed you what it is and how it works. You make a decision. But I can definitely answer this question for myself. Should I buy this multimedia box? And the answer is absolutely yes. And here are the few reasons. First, I love gadgets. I love all kind of gadgets, so I personally must have it. With this thing, I'm gonna play for a long time. And hopefully I'm gonna make more videos when I find something interesting. And secondly, you know, when I drive my daughter in the back seat, she keeps asking me all these questions about everything non-stop. So finally I can turn on her favorite kid show on the YouTube so she can leave me alone. And the third reason why I need this box is the most important one. When someone gets inside my car, I can do this. Open YouTube. Opening YouTube. And everyone go like, whoa, nice. Open Netflix. Opening Netflix. And everyone will go, whoa, how did you do that? Sometimes I like to brag about stuff. If you want to buy this multimedia box, you can just click the link in the description. And if you order this box through the link in this video, I will get a little commission to support this channel so I can get a lot of more content, a lot more good stuff for all of you.